The next item on the agenda is a review of new invoices and purchase orders. I believe we have some checks to sign.
item on the agenda. Um, review of expense report and budget data to date. So this is what you're looking at. We haven't finished February yet, but as of this point, the sewer budget is at 14%, which is pretty good. And the water is at 13% year to date. Bear in mind, we're not done with the month yet. Are there any new purchase orders that are pending? Let me hear some new purchase orders. All right, we'll move on to that. discuss tonight, or I wanted to discuss tonight, the idea of changing from flat rate to a consumption-based billing process. Now, the town of Rollinsford, when they do their tax rate, basically uses a formula very much like we're you're about to see, where people are assessed their taxes based on a proportional share of the town's value. Well, we're going to do something like that, but I'm proposing to do something like that with water. Right now, we're just going to talk about water, initially. And for water, the basic rate is $93 for the first 15,000 gallons of water you use. Okay? Anybody who gets a bill knows that. The rate is based on thousands of gallons. In other words, we don't bill 15,000, we bill 15. Everything is divided by a thousand. As you can see here, fifteen thousand gallons equals fifteen units of water. For each additional unit of water, a thousand gallons, you're charged six dollars and sixteen cents. Now, actually, that's mathematically incorrect. It should be six dollars and twenty cents, but who's going to argue over four cents? Some people might, but that's how it's done. The rate was based on $93 divided by 15 units of water. 93 divided by 15. And if you do that math, you'll come to $6.20. Okay? You can follow along on these things. You can take notes. Thus, if a household used 17 units of water, or 17,000 gallons and a quarter, the bill would be $93 plus two times 6.16 for a total of 105.32. Everybody following the math so far? The problem is that 76% of the households in the district use less than 15,000 gallons per quarter. Some by a significant amount. Not yet. 
Write your questions down on the thing. I, I, have, I have proof, by the way, in case you're wondering. A household that uses seven units of water, or 7,000 gallons, costs them $13.28. Take 93, divide by seven, that's what you get, 13.28. In other words, a person who uses 7,000 gallons, or half of the minimum standard, pays more than twice what somebody who uses 15,000 gallons. I think you're starting to see where the basic inequity is starting to show up. The result is, houses that conserve water pay more per unit of water, and houses that conserve actually subsidize houses that use more. That's a fact. Because they pay the difference between 7,000 and 15,000, but do not gain the benefit of that extra 8,000 gallons. Here's what other towns charge. Dover, 540 per unit. And by the way, a unit in these other towns is done in cubic feet. So it's all done as 100 cubic feet, which is about 748 gallons, or three quarters of what we use as a unit. But nonetheless, you can see Dover's 540 per unit. Rochester's two dollars and forty cents. Summersworth is five forty, and Durham is seven thirty-five. So they're paying quite a bit less than we are. But then again, they're large cities, and they have economies of scale. How do we calculate the cost of water in Rollinsburg? Well, the first step is we take how many units of water, a thousand gallons per unit. Does the district bill in a year? Well, over several years, it averages out about 30,600,000 gallons. You divide that by 1,000, that's 30,600 units in a year. Determine how much. Now, we have to spread the debt, the fixed debt of the, of the district evenly over everyone. Everybody's got to pay it. Whether you use one gallon or 50,000 gallons, you've got to pay your share of the debt because the debt benefits everyone pretty much equally. So if we look at next year's budget, the water debt, if it's passed, the total cost of the debt will be 114526 That's prior debts plus anything that gets approved this year. Now, there are 698 households receiving water in the district. There are a little bit more now, but when this calculation was done, that's what it was. That equals 164.08 per year per household and 41.02 per quart. So, before you even use a drop of water, you've got to pay part of the debt. <coughs> then you subtract the debt from the total water budget. Now, this is the because that comes off the top and everybody's going to pay it, you now look at the sort of operational cost which is left after you pay your debt. Well, the total proposed budget for the water district is 413870 You subtract the debt, 114526 you end up at 299 That's the number. You divide it by the number of units, 299344 and you come to $9.78 per unit which is more expensive than Dover and Rochester and Summersworth and Durham and all the rest because we're a very small district. But that's what it comes to. You figure your quarterly bill this way. Multiply the number of units in your house. You may be a single family unit. You may be like me where there's three times 4102, which is the debt everyone has to share. And then the units of water times 978. That's how it's calculated. An example, a single family home that uses 7,000 gallons of water per quarter, they're going to pay 4102 towards the debt plus 7 times 9.78, which means their water bill will be 10948. They use 7,000 gallons. So far so good? Now, the sewer district, 
unlike the water building, sewers built at one, one, $145 per household, flat. There's no variation in how much you use or how much you send down the system. It's 145 for residential use. And you'll note I said it doesn't include commercial. Sewer is then charged 145 times the number of household or apartments in a building. So I have three, so I have three times 145. If you have a single family home, it's 145. Okay, so far? I haven't, haven't lost anybody yet, have I? And again, the problem with sewer is people who use more water pay the same as they, those who use less. That's not equitable. And high volume users are subsidized by the low volume users. There is a cost to treating wastewater and up in the river, although decades ago we did. We can't do that. And we're facing the potential of more costs down the line. They're still developing. So we go to consumption based billing for sewer. How many units of water does the district bill in a year for sewer users? Now, there are fewer sewer users than there are water users. So the amount of gallons or units is less for those who also have sewer. And it comes out to 22,707 22, units of sewer usage. So that's 22,707,000 gallons are used by sewer users as well. Is it significantly less? Number of sewer users versus water. Well, 698, um, 698 for water, 463 for households. So that is significant. Right. Well, there are more multi-unit units, households in the downtown area than there are on Silver Street or General John Sullivan. So that sort of stands to reason. The population in the downtown area is more densely populated, mm -hmm. and therefore. That's what you get. Yes, it is significant. But now, could I just, is it because of apartments? Hardly. Well, but each apartment home, is a household? Single family homes have been turned into duplexes. Single family homes have been turned into apartments. It's just population density. No, I get all that. Okay. What I'm wondering is, you're using households. Yes. Is it every single apartment? Like yes. you have three. Are you paying yes. three times? Yes. I do say yes. Okay. It says, how much debt each household, I have three in my house. Some people have two, some have one, some have 17. They're going to have to pay the number of households, individual domiciles, yep. times the debt. Now, again, it's the debt for the water <coughs> sewer district for this year is going to be 53775 we divide that by the 463 households, 16014 per year, or 2904 per quarter. Okay? So in addition to your water, you're also going to have to pay the debt 2904 per household for the debt on sewer. You subtract the debt from the total sewer budget, because people are going to pay that up front, and you end up with 323302 it's on your thing. You divide the budget after debt into units of sewer. Again, 323302 divided by 22,707 units, you come to 1424. That's pretty expensive. It is, compared to surrounding communities. But that's to be expected. We're a very small district. We do not get economies of scale <coughs> because we're so small. Our carrying costs and operational costs are, we still have to pay electricity the same as everybody else. We have to buy chemicals the same as everybody else. And that's the way it turns out, 1424. Now you figure your quarterly sewer bill by the number of households in your building. You may have one, you may have two, you may have five, you may have 17, times 2904, and then however many units of sewer or thousands of gallons you send down the system times 1424. An example, a single family home that uses 7,000 gallons of water per quarter would pay 2904 for debt 
plus 7 times 14.24 or 128.72. That's the sewer side, which is less than 145. Hmm. Okay, the total bill for this example is 109.48 for water, 128.72 for sewer, that's, we determined those for four, and it comes to a total of $238.20, which is a few pennies off what they're paying now, 93 plus 145. Okay? As you use less, that number will drop. As you use more, it will climb. So it's a linear relationship. It's not like people who use 30,000 gallons get whacked two and a half times as much. It's, it's a straight line relationship. Now, Heather put together, this is the formula in case you're kind of a algebraic gearhead. You can actually figure your water bill this way. And there it is all in detail. Okay, that's it for the data. Now let's go to questions. Yeah. Have you considered elasticity? What I don't happened know what elasticity is because it determines this. When things are more expensive, they use less of it. So how does conservation as people's bills uh, as people are paying on consumption, they're going to use less, they're going to conserve, you're not going to have the same revenue. So have you fi fi factored that somehow? How does the town handle it when, say, property values go down? What do they do? They adjust the uh, tax rate. So this is That's stage that. one then and you're going to evaluate? Is that what yes, you're saying? Yes, it's got to be done anyway. It would have to be done anyway. Actually, what we're doing is we're saying, folks, some of you have got to learn to conserve. Some of you are conserving very well now. We applaud you. Some of you aren't. You need to think about it. Yes? Um, first of all, thank you for at least looking at this and exploring this. Some of this is over my head, and I don't know how a lot of this works, so bear with me. Okay. But does, um, does the town make money on water used. For instance, if we were to... You mean the district? The, the district, yes. If everybody were to use, you know, I don't know, across the board, uh, 13,000 gallons per quarter, would that be good? Like, would we make more money? Like, is there an... Is it, does, does it work that way? Well, now you're talking about reverse conservation. And we, we try to discourage that. Yeah, Let the town right. only sets its tax rate once a year, even though property values may go up and down during the year. Yeah. We're going to do this, my proposal is we do this once a year and then reevaluate it each year. People who are not conserving or using more than reasonable, you know, somebody double their water, water usage, they're going to have to pay. Yeah, so I, I guess my question would be, so if there was a flat rate to cover the debt, and we, so we had the debt, the debt covered, but then yes. people just started using less and less water, would, would, we, would that be a problem for the, no. for the district? Because we are, because it's the cost is in the treatment and whatnot for the water? Is that I, I, I can't imagine that there's going to be a dramatic reduction in water conservation. I would like to see it. It would be a good thing. But does it... Does it fluctuate? Like, so if we have the flat rate for the for the debt, because we have to pay the salaries and the housing and stuff like that, does it? Will we make more money if people decide, oh, okay, well, I'm going to use more more water, or will we, will we or does it? Like, does that if, make sense? If, you, know, if you set the water, if you set the rate, okay, and then suddenly everybody one becomes profligate in the use of water, yep. shame on them. We will make we will have more money. Yeah, yep. yep. true. But there's still an operational cost because it costs to pump the water out of the wells, treat the wells, handle the wastewater as it goes out. So there's some costs related to that. Okay. Uh, yes. So <clears throat> is there a percentage increase in summer for watering and things like that? No. Just like there isn't an increase 
for your property tax if suddenly property values go up 5%. That would be your assessment going up 5%. They, they don't redo your property tax every three months. No percentage of usage. You're saying this yes. is based on single family houses who use 7,000 per quarter, but each quarter is clearly not the same. So has this formula, does it take into consideration that several people may be using more in the yes. summer months? See, <coughs> 22,707 is an annual amount for sewer. That's an annual amount. So we average it. Okay, we, we assume that's what it's going to be for the whole year. And water is like 30,600. That's for an entire year. So January, February, March, there may be relatively little water being used. Well, normal usage. Then June, July, August, it skyrockets. But we use annual amounts. So it should average out over the year to that amount. And is, it, may I ask if this presentation is being done at the annual meeting? No. Oh. no. Because would, is it voted on? No. How is it decided? We decide. Okay. But we, this is the first time anyone's brought forth an informational hearing about water rates and sewer rates. Usually it's just done. At least we came to you, we provided the information and the justification. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Angela? So what's your implementation timeline? Are you going to put this into effect um, next month, next year? What Are you just going to study it for a while and then roll it out to... We're going to talk amongst ourselves about... I mean, theoretically, theoretically, we could implement it for April 1st. Theoretically. Right, no, absolutely. But there may be other considerations like, wait a minute, maybe we ought to go one more quarter on our current rate and... This is something we have to discuss. It's a bold step in a new direction with a, a, a kind of risk involved, but I think it's you know, an interesting, interesting new direction. Um, I did have another question, but if somebody else wants to go first, it's okay. Yes, Alice. Um, thank you for this presentation. It was very thorough and informative. I appreciate that. Um, I, at the public hearing a couple weeks ago, you stated that you used one year of data, correct? For I know. For this example, we researched three years to okay. see if there was Again, anomalous okay. usage, and there was not. So okay. rather than put together 60,000 lines of data, I said, let's pick the most recent year and go with that. Okay, how did you evaluate the consistency? Well, it was within, I believe it was within 3% annual. Just the overall? Yes. Amount. Okay. And how did you pick out the 7,000, that threshold? Um, because that seems to be the break even between what people, the break even point is that from 7,000 down, you'll either pay almost the same as you're paying now or less. From 7000 up, you're going to pay more. That's sort of the breakover point. Um, and also, I'm sorry, uh, I was wondering about commercial properties and how do they factor into this? They would they're, just they're going, to, the they're, they're going to be put on this way. Okay, so there wouldn't be a separate commercial rate? No. Commercial modern sewers by consumption. Or should be. So I have to make a question about an implementation timeline. Um, how will you alert us? You know, you could go this quarter, you could go next quarter. How will you alert the rate payers to... We'll put something on the website and we'll probably send them a mail -out. Okay. Saying, heads up, it's going to happen next month or heads up in the next quarter? The next billing, yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah. Actually, Is there no benefit of presenting that there might be a change coming at the... I don't know how many people come to the annual meeting, but that's your biggest <coughs> from the district. It seems like you'd want to let them know this is coming and explain it to them. It I may not be coming. This is a theory. This is a proposal. This and I would an ask idea. then, we're presenting it for you three to discuss. <coughs> is that correct? Pardon? You're presenting it because you three are are proposing this, or you are proposing we're this, and you're going to discuss it. it. We're mm -hmm. investigating Okay, 
So wouldn't it benefit the people, the payers in the district to be aware of this? I think you're going to run into another PR problem and you've had enough PR problems as far as I can see in the town. Like, why not share this? No, um, how, the question, all right. I can already tell you that the annual meeting is going to be fairly long. Okay. And this takes half an hour to 45 minutes. Where would we put it in our agenda for that night? <coughs> well, then I guess if it's a long meeting, you got to organize that. But if you're changing the billing process and you're not going to tell people until you decide to do it, like they used to do it? 